Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Jumper T-Lite, a compact sized budget friendly radio controller that features an internal multi-protocol module and an external module bay that will enable you to use it with TBS Crossfire Nano and similar radio transmission modules. In this video I'm going to go over its features and specs, show you how to set it up and give you my initial feedback after testing it out. In terms of packaging, inside the box along with the T-Lite radio controller, you can find a linear antenna with an SMA antenna connector, a quick start guide, some colorful stickers, a USB to USB Type-C cable, a plastic case for storing two 18650 lithium-ion battery cells, and the external radio module expansion bay which you will need to assemble by yourself. In terms of specs, the Jumper T-Lite is running OpenTX firmware, it supports 8 channels, so on the top side of the radio controller you can find two 3 position and two 2 position switches. It features the same full sized whole sensor gimbals of the Jumper T12 Pro, a monochromatic 1.3 inch LCD screen with a resolution of 128 by 64 pixels, a comfortable to hold rubberized texture, a pretty loudspeaker, trim center, a removable antenna. It is powered using a single 18650 lithium ion battery cell which is not included and charging the battery is done internally via the USB Type-C connector which is also used for flashing the firmware of the radio controller and using it for flight simulators. In addition the T-Lite features a 3.5mm strainer port and a micro SD card slot and you should note that a micro SD card is not included. One more thing that you should note is that the Jumper T-Lite is available in two versions which only differ in their internal multi-protocol model, so you can get a version that comes with a single C2500 multi-protocol chip and a more expensive version that comes with a JP4-in-1 multi-protocol model that supports more protocols. In terms of dimensions, the Jumper T-Lite weighs 253.5 grams including a battery, so it is lighter than the TBS Tiger 2 and the Air Sky X-Lite and slightly heavier than the Beta FPV Lite Radio 2, which shows with it a very similar form factor. As for operating the T-Lite, first of all you will need to install an 18650 lithium ion battery cell, which again is not included, and you have to make sure that the battery is installed correctly, as otherwise it is going to damage the radio controller. In addition, you should also note that you might need to slightly bend the metal bars in order for the battery to fit firmly inside the battery compartment. Then after installing the battery, Connect the radio controller antenna, as otherwise, in case you are going to turn on the radio controller without it, it is going to damage the internal radio transmission module in case it is going to be turned on. Now you can turn on the T-Lite by long pressing the power button, and keep in mind that in case you would like the voice, low scripts and other features to be present, you need to copy the microSD card contents which are going to be linked down below to a microSD card, and place it in the microSD card slot of the radio controller. After turning on the T-Lite radio controller, you can navigate between the different options by using the up, down, enter, return, model and system buttons. Long pressing the model button is going to enter the model menu where you can navigate between the different pages by short pressing the model and system buttons. Go back by hitting return. Select an option by pressing enter. Move up and down using the up and down buttons. And by long pressing the system button while you are at the main screen, you'll be able to enter the system settings. In addition, next to the power button, you can find the trim buttons. Now, in order to show you how to configure the internal multi-protocol radio model, I'm going to show you how to bind an FRSky D8 compatible radio receiver. First, you will need to enter the model menu by long pressing the model button, move to the second page, scroll down to the internal RF section, select the mode by pressing the enter button, using the up and down arrows, select multi-protocol, Press enter in order to confirm your selection, move down, under type select FR Sky X, set the protocol subtype to D8. Next to receiver you can leave the number at 00, zero which means that you can use the same model for different FR Sky D8 compatible radio receivers. However, if you'd like to use this model with a specific radio receiver, you can also assign a number to it. In order to switch to bind, select the model button, and in order to initiate the binding procedure, press enter. Now you need to enter binding mode on the radio receiver as well, which I've already done, and as you can see this radio receiver is bound with the radio controller. While I'm not going to go over all the available options, similarly you'll be able to bind many types of radio receivers, 
And I would like to remind you that in case you are going to use FROSKY and other radio receivers that requires you to do so, in order to maximize the range of the radio controller, you will need to perform a frequency tune calibration. Basically, this process will require you to bind the radio controller with the radio receiver, place the receiver about a meter away from the radio controller, then select frequency tune, increment the value until you are going to lose radio connectivity with the radio receiver, mark down this value, then move down again until you are going to lose radio connectivity with the radio receiver, mark this value again, and set the frequency tune value to the average of these two numbers. So for example, if the highest number was 10 and the lowest number was minus 4, the average of these two numbers is 3, which is the value that the frequency tune needs to be set to. Now I'm going to show you how to assemble the included external module bay, a simple process that will require you to disassemble the radio controller, However, I've confirmed it with jumper, and you can be rest assured that it is not going to void your warranty. The first thing that you need to do is to remove the battery. Remove the antenna as well, so it's not going to get in your way. Place the radio controller upside down in its case, so the gimbals are going to be protected. And remove the 8 Phillips screws, which are located on the back of the radio controller. Then remove the external model sticker from the back of the radio controller and carefully separate the back and front covers. While it's not mandatory, in case you would like to completely separate the front and back parts, you can unplug the battery connector, which is located over here. Here you can see the internal parts of the T-Lite, so everything looks well organized, and all the components can be easily replaced, including the internal radio transmission module, which you can simply unplug in the following manner. In addition, besides adding the external module bay, which I'm going to show you shortly, by opening the radio controller, you'll be able to switch between mode 2, which is the default option, to mode 1, by moving this metal bar along with these two Phillips screws to the other side, and you'll be able to adjust the tension of the gimbals by loosening or fastening these Phillips screws. As for adding the external model bay, first partially insert the three Phillips screws, which are included with it, inside its bag, then insert its JST connector through this hole on the back of the radio controller, Secure the external model bay using the Phillips screws to these three holes and connect the JST connector to this port over here. Then in case you need to, plug back the battery connector and put back the back cover, battery and the antenna. As for configuring and using the external model bay, first attach a compatible radio model such as the TBS Crossfire Nano and then under the model menu under external RF you'll be able to set it up. So in case you're going to use TBS Crossfire or Tracer Nano models, you need to set the mode to Crossfire. Now as you can see, the Crossfire Nano is powered up, and after copying the microSD card contents to the microSD card, you'll be able to configure it by long pressing the system button, navigating to the Crossfire configuration option, pressing enter, and selecting Crossfire Micro TX. Pay attention though, that while being powered directly from the radio controller, the maximum supported output power is 25 milliwatts, as if you are going to set it to a higher output power, things can go wrong, so in case you would like to set it to a higher output power, you will need to power the radio module externally using a power bank. So now, as you can see, the output power is set to 500 milliwatts. This is of course not ideal, so what you can do in order to solve it is to connect the 1S battery directly to the module using a 5V BEC in order to power it up. As for using the T-Lite with flight simulators, simply connect it to your computer after being powered up using its USB Type-C port, select USB joystick, and it is going to be automatically detected. Then most likely you will need to go through the calibration procedure, and after that you'll be able to start flying. Overall, after testing the Jumper T-Lite for the last couple of days, I can tell you that in my opinion, Jumper have done a really nice job in providing a mid-range solution between the Beta FPV Light Radio 2 and the more expensive TBS Tango 2 and Afro Sky X Lite. So especially if you're a Tumber and you're mainly going to use the internal multi-protocol radio model, or you're looking for a budget-friendly radio controller which you can sell along your older equipment as you advance, the Jumper T-Lite seems like a very good option, and in case you are a pincher, I recommend to upgrade the 3mm gimbals to these thick ends, as they are going to provide you with a better and precise control. In case however you are a Crossfire user, and you occasionally require the usage of a multi-protocol model, I recommend to go with the TBS Tiger 2 and simply add the multi-protocol expansion bay.
By the way, one last thing that I would like to add before wrapping up this video. Keep in mind that at the moment of shooting this video, the Jumper T-Lite is not supported by the OpenTX Companion, so you won't be able to export your settings and flash new firmware using it. And according to Jumper, on the next version of the OpenTX Companion, the support is going to be added. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about the Jumper T-Lite, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.